be exactly the same as what it was, except using a PlayStation controller. Mm, working, but I'm pretty sure it was changing direction. Hey, and welcome back to our new project. Um, if you're anything like me, you've got a boy. A boy who likes radio control cars, and if you're also like me, you've got two boys who like radio control cars. And the problem with radio control cars are the ones we buy anyway, are these sort of cheaper ones. Uh, they have the controller which breaks and goes missing, or the two controllers are on the same frequency, so you can only run one car at a time, so you can't race each other. <clears throat> so I was googling around the other day. And I thought, well, PlayStation control the Bluetooth. Couldn't you just control the car with a Bluetooth controller or a PS4 controller? And you kind of can. Um, there's a library out there for Arduino where you can install it or use it to connect your PS4 controller to a Arduino. Um, and then that, in turn, can control the car. So for this project, the goal is to get this car to run off a um, PlayStation, PlayStation controller and hopefully have a sort of setup so I can put that in all these little toy cars so we can run them all with different controllers all at the same time. So the first thing we need to do is find out what's inside this one um, with regards to motors and how big they are and how it works and then um, figure out our best plan of action to um, for hardware to drive it all. So I'll get this one apart and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so it's pretty basic inside. It's got the controller board there, which does all the, the magic, I guess. And we've got two little motors. So um, this steering setup isn't complicated, right? It, um, it's got a motor which gets forced in one direction or the other, so there's no sort of proportional steering. It's either full one way or full the other. So we just need a simple motor driver in there, nothing like a servo and the same motor on the back and they're quite small so probably just need a small motor driver connected to um, our controller of choice you wouldn't really drive the motors directly off the controller because the current would probably just cook the controller so you needed an extra board to drive those separately so we'll investigate it further on what our best option will be Okay, fast forward half a day, and um, I've got to go and use this on ESP. I'm going to create this with an ESP32 um, controller, which is um, because it's got Bluetooth built into it, right? So if I used another controller, I'd have to try and get a Bluetooth controller and get those two to talk together with this controller. It's got everything built in along with as as well as Wi-Fi. So we want Bluetooth because all the PlayStation controllers are Bluetooth. So you can connect your PlayStation controller to a computer or a phone just through Bluetooth. So that's pretty cool. Um, as well as that, I've chosen this driver here. It's I've seen lots of videos of people using this and with similar size motors. So hopefully it's got the grunt to Turn the little motors inside our little car. It is called a TB6612. Mm. Strange name, but it's, it's, it's what it is. I'm sure it, it means something to somebody, but that's, that's what I'm going to use. So if you, I'll, I'll add all this to the comments in the show notes or whatever so you can see if you want to get it to get something similar. Now, so we've got the controller sorted out and the driver board. 
Uh, the next thing is trying to get the controller to talk to, or make sure it can talk to the PlayStation, PlayStation controller can talk to the ESP32. And I spent a long time trying to get this to work, and I can't. Um, so someone's written this library uh, to use on your Arduino, and I just cannot get it to work. So when you push the button or connect your controller to your PlayStation, it puts a special address into the controller called a MAC address, and every time you turn it on, it looks for the PlayStation MAC address. So to what you want to do is you want to set the MAC address inside the ESP32 to match what's in the controller. And there's software you can use to change the MAC address. Uh, I think I've still got it here. Six access pair tool. So you just put the MAC address you want to use on your USB32 under here, and they match up. So technically, when you push the button on the PlayStation controller, it looks around and says, "Oh, that's my what I'm going to pair to." But it just doesn't work for me at all. I've tried three different controllers. I've tried various different MAC addresses. Just doesn't work. So the next option is this library is based off another one called or the PS3 controller, and um, I don't have a PS3 controller, but I've, I've ordered one and hopefully they're a little bit more reliable. I have heard the PS4 one going through the forums, it's a bit of a, lots of people struggle, but this PS3 one seems to work, so we'll wait and see when that controller turns up. But the next thing I want to do is make sure that we can drive the motors in our car with the controller, and I've just found this in a other library called ESP32 Arduino 2 the driver chip I have and it's a really simple little code here just to test that it works so I'm going to flash this to my ESP32 and fingers crossed it works okay so I've got my that's all set up I've got my ESP32 my driver board and my motor and I know you're saying Dude, why don't you just breadboard it? But I could have fit it in the car, so I don't want to try and fit a breadboard in the car for testing. I just want it all just to go in. So, fingers crossed, when I plug this in, it's got like a test code where it goes through, changes your X and speeds up and speeds down. It's just a little blue 3D printer gear on the end there so we can see what's happening. We'll plug it in. Cool, so that works. So now I'm going to remove the electronics from the other car and try and just drive the back wheels with um, the circuitry and we'll see what happens. So I've got my ESP32 in here with my driver board. Um, looks a bit of a shambles at the moment, obviously, because it's sort of just getting it together. And I'm going to plug it in and make sure it drives. So um, when this is all running, it's got its own batteries inside, right? Uh, so I'll just better run the whole thing off its own batteries. So it should be exactly the same as what it was, except using a PlayStation controller. Mm, working, but I'm pretty sure it was changing direction when it wasn't, when it's connected to the other motor. But we, can, we prove it works, right? I'm not really worried about the front motor because if the back motor is working, the front motor must work. So, next steps I need to, while well, I'm waiting for the controller to turn up, I'll make tidy this all up and get it all mounted and tightly and hidden away. So the other body can fit on top. This is just the, the brains 
Not the old one, so if I... If this tends to cast it, I can roll it back to what it was, right? In but make it so the top fits on and use the original power switch and everything so it'll be pretty cool so at the end of it it'll have those two bits with the playstation controller and we're driving it that way but in the meantime i shall tidy this all up i'm gonna have to print some little brackets to hold everything in place and as soon as the controller turn up fingers crossed i can get it to work with this Otherwise, of course, we've got Wi-Fi on this module as well. I can probably just use an app on my phone to control it. But we'll wait and see what happens. Thanks for watching.